satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace that is the praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. He said, with a louder cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. Mark. Okay, everybody. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mark chapter 15. This is what Jesus Christ went through. And the love Jesus still had on the cross. When you read the book of Luke, chapter 23, he told the criminals, one of the criminals that was with him, they were complaining, going back and forth arguing. He told one of them that he would be with him in paradise. The soldiers that were doing the killing and everything. Luke chapter 
23 verse 34. He asked the father to forgive them for they know not what they do. The love that he had in so much pain and still thinking about others. What does that tell us? May we have that same love for each other. Now, Scroll down to verse 17. I mean, I, I, I'm just, this is, this is, this, this is just the love of God sending his son. Look at the persecutions. Verse 17 through 20, I'm going to read again. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to cry out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. Just just making a mockery. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. They led him out to crucify him. This right here to verse 20, 17 and 20, just listen at everything that they were doing. And again, this is the NIV I read from different versions, King James, um, different versions, whatever version. It's all the same. Look at what he went through for us. Just look. Go down to in verse 23. 23 to 25. They then offered him wine mixed with myrrh. But he did not take it. And they crucified him dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. They offered him wine. They offered him myrrh. He refused. He wanted wanted to feel the full effects. He had to go through this with a clear mind and everything. They didn't want to hear the screams. They didn't want to hear the anything about him, Jesus crying out. They wanted, they, they, they wanted him drunk. He refused because he wanted to have clear mind and everything to go through this for us. Then they divided up his clothes. They cast lots like they're playing dice to see who's going to get what. Just tossing the clothes and and, and just making a mockery. Now this was 9 in the morning. 9 in the morning. Okay. Go down to verse 29. 29. Those who passed by hurled insults at him. Shaking their heads and saying, So, who are you going to destroy? The temple. And build it up in three days? It says, so you, who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days? Reading along, come down now from the cross and save yourself. Just, 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 just terrible. Just mocking. Just, just terrible. And it says, reading on, in the same way, the chief priest And the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. 32 verse 32. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. 
Wow. Now at noon, reading along, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Now from nine o'clock to three. Nine o'clock to three, six hours. Now at three in the afternoon, this is when Jesus Christ, he cried out. He cried out. And after he cried out and asked God, why had he forsaken him? Now, this seems so, so like, wow, God forsaken him. God turned his back on his own son. Because God had to do this because Jesus was taking on all of our sins, fornication, adultery, uh, murdering, everything. God turns his back against sinners. But all of this was put on Jesus. God had to do this. God did this lovingly. He didn't have to do this for us. He didn't even have to send his son, but he did. He could have just kept judging us, okay, you're wrong, you die, that's it, okay, you're good, you're bad, you're rewarded for good, you're punished for bad, okay, you live the good of life or you die, and that's it. No salvation, anything. But this is what God did for us. He had to turn his back on his own son in order for us to be saved. This is what he did. All of this. Read verse 37. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. He took his last breath after all of this. And the centurion man said, Surely this man was the Son of God. All of this Jesus took for us. When they just, they, they, they put the crown on his head and was hitting him, thorns in his head, just hitting him. He's bleeding. His back is bleeding. His everything is bleeding. And they're mocking him. And he's in so much pain. The sky went dark at 12. It was so gruesome. It was so, so gruesome. All of this that he Went through. All of this. What does this mean for us? It means a lot. It means that we have salvation. And that we should acknowledge that. And we should accept it. It's there for us. It's there for us. If you don't reach out. And acknowledge. And and, 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 and mean it with your heart. And, and, and change your life over. Or, or, or Because it's there. You have to reach out and ask Jesus to come into your, your heart. That you accept him. You have to let him know. You have to let him know. That you want to be his sheep. That he is your shepherd. Because if not, all is in vain when it comes to you. If you don't accept him. Into your life. Now, again, he, he he had a little wine, a little not a little wine, a little vinegar, a little sponge. That goes to show you he he said he he was thirsty. That goes to show you that yes, he was human, but he didn't want the other myrrh and everything. He didn't want to be drunk. He didn't want that. But the little somebody ran a little sponge. Uh, uh, I'm on his lips to give him a little drink because he's human. Some people say, well, no, he wasn't human and this and that. But yes, he was human. He's he was a human. This this is this is this is the prophecy. This is the prophecy. I mean, he went through all of this for us. He went through and God even had to turn his own back on his son because he was taking all of our sins, one man, 
all of our sins.